thank you very much. So it's a glad, um, great pleasure for me to be here and join with you my, uh, my knowledge. And my presentation will be about the Martin Hartman uh, collection in our library. And um, in the second half of the 19th century, East Turkestan arose the interest of Orientalists all over the world, and they began traveling there to research the undiscovered um, languages and cultures of this part of the Silk Road. East Turkestan, the homeland of the Uyghurs, is a multi-ethnic region with a multiplicity of cultural and religious traditions. Most of the population of East Turkestan are Uyghurs and Turkic-speaking ethnic group. And there are also other Turkic-speaking groups such as Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and Tatar, Uzbek, along with other Muslim groups such as Tajiks and Hui Muslims. So one classic uh, example of the Orientalist efforts was the four German Prussian Turfan expeditions sent to East Turkestan between 1902 and 1914. Uh, 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 these undertakings primarily aimed to acquire Buddhist and other cultural monuments and written documents free, from pre-Islamic Central Asia. Despite all the difficulties, the expedition members managed to make the undertakings a huge success and to provide the Berlin Museums with extraordinary finds from the ex uh, excavation sites on the old roads of the Silk Road. So, Martin Hartmann was a famous German Orientalist who acted as chairman of the Turfan Committee. He was regarded as the most famous scholar of Arabic and Islam in uh, Germany at that time. The provincial government in East Turkestan gave him an official permit for his expedition there, and so he went to Kashgar and Yarkand between August 1902 and uh, April 1903. So his aim was pro uh, probably to report the present, uh, present situation there and to collect some written and oral materials among Uyghurs and Hui Muslims in Kashgar, Yarkent, and Maralbashi. Hartman made several expeditions into Ottoman territory and the Far East before East Turkestan. And why he went to East Turkestan at the same time as the German Turfan expedition is unclear. So we don't know whether it was a coincidence. Um, here I will want to speak some yeah, details about his stay in Istanbul and then in Turkestan and so on. In 1901, prior, of, uh, prior to his trip to East Turkestan, Hartmann met an Uyghur scholar, Arif Niyaz, from Aksu in Istanbul at a dervish lodge in Istanbul, actually. Hartmann was amazed by Arif's uh, wide range of interests and in-depth knowledge, which Arif has amassed despite never having dwelt at any of the better known seats of Islamic scholarship. Hartmann wrote, in der Tat besitz Arif ein sehr gute Kenntnisse arabischer Sprache, Er hat viel gelesen und kann sich äh, geläufig ausdrücken, obwohl er nie in arabische sprechende Lande gelebt hat. Diese seine Fähigkeit hatte zur Folge, dass es zu Sprachübungen in seiner Muttersprache nicht kam, zugleich aber, dass ich ihm alle meine Wünsche vollkommen deutlich machen und er meine Fragen in der uns beiden vertrauten arabischen Schulsprachen beantworten konnte. Hartmann even attempted to create a Chagatai textbook for foreigners with Arif in 1901. In 1902, he published the book Lisani Turki with the collaboration of Arif in Germany. Moreover, Arif gave Hartmann a lot of information about language differences in the country and its relationship of uh, Eastern Turkey with Western Turkey. Arif told Hartmann that he, will, he saw numerous valuable old manuscripts by his famous teacher as goods of Waqf. Arif also tells him that the British consulate in Kashgar is particularly interested in the trade link with India, and among the important items there are some Bombay prints, which are cheaper and better than the Kazan prints. He was also informed about some printing issues um, too. We can assume that his relationship with this Uyghur scholar 
Arif gave him his first glimpse of East Turkestan, and it probably is the motivations that led him there to collect some materials about religion, literature, law, and history. Even some intellectuals that Hartman met in Kashgar later on had some connection to Arif. Before his trip, he also contacted many famous orientalists, sinologists, and China experts in Europe and all over the world to find out about the situation there. So Hartman in East Turkestan. Hartman couldn't only move more freely there, but also was able to export the scientific collections and materials that he gathered during his journey. How did Hartman acquire manuscripts and printed matters, mainly in East Turkestan? Were these materials freely available? Who helped him to find them? Based on the available materials and this paper will illuminate Hartmann's collecting methods, his collecting criteria and his motivation for acquiring the manuscripts and printed matters. Judge McCartney was the pre British consulate in Kashgar at that time. Mr. Backland was Swedish missionary in uh, Kashgar at that time too, and he died in autumn 1903. Hartmann stayed at Swedish mission house during his stay in Kashgar and in Yarkand. From his book, Chinese Turkestan, we infer that Hartmann attempted to contact the local mullahs in each of the madrasas in Kashgar and Yarkand directly when he was there, of course, with the help of native speakers. In the book, one finds detailed narratives about the famous madrasas as well as their scholars, materials, teaching methods, and students. Hartmann was even able by communicating in Arabic to evaluate local scholars' knowledge of Arabic. He also noticed that it wasn't easy to acquire materials there because the chance to find manuscripts for foreigners were very small. Therefore, Hartmann employed a man named Igen Bardi in Yarkan. Actually, he is from Kashgar. And Hartmann wrote that Igen Bardi rendered him excellent service as a commission agent for the procurement of books and observational materials in several languages. So with regard to buying manuscripts, Hartmann had his own territory, a theory, in order to preserve the goodwill of these people and make them even more active, he bought most of the manuscript they brought to him. He believed that in order to get something good, uh, you had to accept inferior quality as well. So some of the manuscript in the library prose that he said, you can see um, uh, um, some um, writing exercises on the right side and the left side, there are also some miniatures. They are not com completed and they are in horrible situation. And at the back side, you can see also some Manju uh, scripts. And this is uh, at the big, uh, um, on the first part of this manuscript, there are some narratives about Mulaika and then there are some uh, doodles and then this, manu, uh, this Manju text and then there are also some doodles, so some, something like that. Moreover, Igenberdi was also in charge of contacting people who could recite folk songs, dastans. In the beginning, Hartmann tried to transcribe them um, by himself and later his Turkey teacher in Kashgar and Yarkand helped him with transcription. Even before his trip to East Turkestan, Hartmann was very interested in the Hui Muslims and their works. When he was there, he asked Igen Berdi to help him meet local Hui Muslims and buy some manuscript in Kashgar and in Maralbashi. At the end of October 1902, so through Igen Berdi, he acquired some manuscripts from a Hui Muslim in Kashgar who was a very good friend of Igen Berdi and who was in urgent need of money at that time. So Hartmann said that even at that time, it was difficult for the Europeans living in Kashgar to find such manuscripts. And therefore, no libraries in Europe had such manuscripts at that time because the Muslims in China do not like foreigners learning about this use of Arabic scripts 
to represent Chinese language documents. Through Egan Badi, he was also informed that they were Hui in Yarkand and also in Marawashi, uh, who, know, uh, who knew poems that describing of the battles between Hui and Chinese and between Hui's and Turkic people there. Some are half Chinese and some are half uh, Turkic. However, in spite of many efforts, Igenbadi does not manage to bring single Huis into House of Swedish Mission or otherwise arrange a meeting with such person because these people in Yarkand did not trust the strangers. Hartmann was also interested in the printed matters in East Turkestan. Therefore, despite his best efforts, he only acquired a few examples. Hartmann on the topic of print indicated that the bookkeeping was at a very low level in Kashgar and Yarkand as compared to West Turkestan. And that the Chinese government in the region did not favor the printing industry in any way. Based on some information from Arif, he contacted a publisher named Nur Haji in Kashgar and brought some lithographs to Germany. On this journey, Hartmann collected 49 printed matters in Chagatai or in Turkey from Tashkent and Samarkand, also in West Turkestan, and 10 from East Turkey. There are some bilingual um, printed matters too. In 1905, our library acquired his entire Chagatai collection together with Arabic, Persian, Hui manuscripts and printed matters. About 95% of his whole collection comes from Central Asia. Hartmann's uh, predilection for historical themes and um, religion is evident from the greater numbers of manuscripts on these topics as compared to those concerning classical literature and medicine. And here I, will, I would like to show you some examples from our collection. There are Risales and which are still be seen as a folk literature there and um, therefore he acquired um, nine or ten or the last of the shoemakers, the hair cutters, the merchants, the shopkeepers, shopkeepers, the uh, spice dealers, the weavers and blacksmiths and farmers and so on. And there are also some interesting manuscripts in Turkey. I don't want to show all of the uh, manuscripts from our collection, and there are some interesting ones. Um, the first one on the left side, this is a booklet of Tadi Court in Kashgar. In Kashgar, Hartmann met Boadin, the most famous scholar of this time there. At that time, he was not only strong in Tafsir, but he still interpreted in front of a small circle in commentary of Qadi Baizavi, who was a scholar at Hanlak Madrasa in Kashgar and also in Khazanchi Madrasa in Kashgar too. And Hartmann already knew his name from Arif in Istanbul. And Hartmann also narrated that his father, Qadr Ahun, was a famous scholar and teacher of Abdul Qadr Ahun, the Turkey teacher of uh, Hartmann, and was even the chief judge of Kashgar in 1902. Probably this manuscript is from him. And the next one is the Tarihi Jedide i Jerida, and uh, this is um, uh, the manuscript in Turkey, and it deals uh, with the history of uh, Hui Muslims in China. And there are some manuscripts on the left side, uh, and you can see the Hui manuscripts. Uh, the text is in Chinese, but it's in Arabic script. Uh, and there are also some um, Hui uh, manuscripts. It's uh, bilingual Chinese and Arabic. And there are some Arabic and Persian manuscripts, which um, Hartman uh, brought to our library from Samarkand, Kashgar, and Yarkand. And there are some printed matters. Uh, this is from uh, Nur Haji's uh, printing house in Kashgar. And you can also see the Manju colophones at the end of this uh, printed matters. All of them, they have these colophones in Manju, not in Turkey. And um, on his journey, uh, Hartmann had also uh, commissioned some famous scholars to produce a number of manuscripts in Turkey for him. 
One of his Turkey teachers, as I said, Abdul Qadr Ahun, he worked at Munshi in the service of the Swedish mission and worked specially for Mr. Beckland at that time. Later on, he was responsible to teach Hartmann in Kashgar. Hartmann received a sample on the Kashgar dialect from him, who was working in West Turkestan in 1906. Here is a letter from uh, Mullah Arab Shah uh, from Yarkant to George McCartney in Kashgar. In, um, you can find it in Hartmann's estate at the library of DMG in Halle. This is a letter from Mullah Rafshab to uh, George McCartney. He said, when Professor Hartmann of the Berlin University came to Yarkand, he ordered me to prepare a Turkey dictionary with Persian equivalent in 10 chapters. He fixed a sum of tenge, uh, tenges, 120 for myself, for complying, and of Tenges, 30, for co copying each chapter. He asked me to send each chapter, when ready, to Mr. Backlund in Kashgar, who would pay me the fixed amounts. According to this arrangement, I prepared with much difficulty in six months, three chapters, and sent them by son to Mr. Backlund. The letter sent a message to me that Professor Hartmann had left no money with him. And that when Mr. Backlund received any money, he would send it to me. The cost of three chapters amounts to 10 uh, 450, out of which I have received 10 30. I shall be very gr grateful if you will be kind enough to get me the remaining sum. So in 1903, Hartmann referred Mullah Rafshah as old Mullah, and he was Hartmann's Turkey teacher in the Arkand. Mullah Rafshah died between 1905 and 1906. Whether Hartmann became the dictionary is unclear. Due to some correspondence in, this, uh, in his estate, it's still unclear whether he paid for the works in full or received them or not. It shows that he wanted to gather more materials about the languages there and somehow did not achieve his goal. We can infer that Hartmann was already interested in the language and religion of the Turkic peoples and Hui Muslims before his trip to East Turkestan. When he was there, he spe uh, specifically looked for these materials. Hartmann did not only contact the famous scholars and learn about their teaching materials there, but he also collected some numerous man manuscripts and printed matters with the help of Igambadi, the native speaker. Shortly before his departure, uh, departure to Germany, he even asked some intellectuals to have some manuscript made for him and sent, sent to him. Indeed, from his correspondence with other researchers in Europe, we can conclude that he did not give up his interest in this country after his trip. This correspondence and materials in his state in Halle should explored in more details in the near future. Thank you for your patience.